The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Be with us now, O God, be in our hearts and our minds and on our lips. We pray for your guidance in all that we shall think and say and do, that this hour of worship will be a holiday and pleasing to you. We pray in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. Our opening hymn, 711. <laughs> Imitators of God as beloved children. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. A fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and to respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that we may, he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit for the reading. reading from the word of God, written in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through to 9. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpent from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 107, found on page 612. We'll be reading verse by verse alternately, uh, 1 to 3 and 17 to 22. Psalm 107, verses 1 to 3 and 17 to 22. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Together. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shout of joy.
A reading from the Word of God, written in Ephesians chapter 2, reading from 1 to 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of his great love with, the, with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and, is seated, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show an immeasurable, show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not our own doing, it is a gift of God, not the results of work, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way in life. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. And as Moses lifted up the Jesus said, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of Christ. Let's pray. Uphold me now, O God, that I may proclaim your word and your word only. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. morning. It's been a while, but God is good. And all the time, Indeed, he is. It's good to be back. It's good to feel like how I'm feeling these days. Not hundred, but a claim in hundred. This morning, I want us to look at the three readings because God, I think, has given me a message God, I know, has given me a message for all of us this morning. For me, as well as for all of us, both here present and those who are watching on this stream. So let us begin with the Old Testament reading. And in the Old Testament reading, we join the Israelites on their 40-year learning experience. And once again, we find them in a familiar place. God had given them victory over the Canaanites and King Arad. And King Arad had previously attacked them, conquered them, and taken some of their people into slavery. They called out to God. And God allowed them in revolt against Arad to completely destroy his army. 
And so they have victory over the army that they could not beat before. But as is the case with these Israelites in this period, they become impatient with God. And they returned to their sinful ways. And they spoke against God and against Moses, and God punishes them by unleashing venomous snakes which bit the people, and many of them died. Once again, the people repent. And God forgives them and gives them a solution. He says to Moses, create a snake. And God, Moses does so. He, he makes a snake out of bronze. And God says to him, mount it on a stick. And depending on what version you read, it could say mount it on a pole or on a tree. And he commanded that everyone who was bitten, if they, in faith, looked at this bronze snake, they would be healed. They would not die. And so said, so done. But we recognize that the healing does not come from the bronze snake, but in faith in God's word. According to Psalm 78, the Israelites sinned against God as they forgot God's miracles that he had shown them. They had forgotten God's goodness to them. They had forgotten, they had sinned because their spirits were unfaithful to God. And they sinned because they refused to obey God's law. They were disobedient. It was as if, although they were God's people, they left the back door open. Hmm? For the devil to come in and to attack their souls. Once they repented, once they looked to God in faith, God was always faithful and always available, forgave them, and then restored the relationship that he had with them. In the gospel reading, the first part of the gospel reading, Jesus makes reference to this story. And he likens himself, quite rightly so, to the bronze snake. Because he was to be raised up on a stick, a pole, a tree. The cross. And faith in him, who he was, what he had done, would heal all of those who looked to him. We need to believe, but we also need to be obedient. And so we look now to the letter to the Ephesians. And Paul goes into detail about this relationship between our faith, <coughs> sorry, our faith and obedience and what God offers us in return. It seems as if the entire letter to the Ephesians is devoted to this. In the piece read this morning, he gives us, it's almost like an overview. The spirit of darkness is at work among us, he says, and particularly amongst those who are disobedient to God. And he defines disobedience as satisfying the cravings of our sinful nature, as following and satisfying our sinful desires and thoughts, as doing and saying those things that we know we shouldn't, and not doing the things we know that we should, like forgiving and restoring broken relationships, and caring 
for those around us. He says persons who fall into this category are objects of God's wrath. Because these things break the relationship with God. Just as the disobedience broke the relationships between the Israelites and God in the desert, disobedience opens the back door for the devil to come in. Never notice how easily we can move from a position of strength in the Lord, experiencing the presence of God in our lives, to a position of feeling distant and finding ourselves succumbing to the temptations the devil throws at us. Check the back door. Check the back door. Paul goes on to tell us in the letter that when we believe our souls are lifted into the heavenly realms along with Christ. And he also tells us that it is in these heavenly realms that God has all of the incomparable riches of his grace which he is going to make known to us in the ages to come. So we're there. Once we believe, we are there. So why is it that we keep on slipping and falling? The back door. You see, I have a problem. In Romans 6, 11, 14, we read, So you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies so that you obey, obey, obey sin's desires. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been bought, brought from life, death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law but under grace. So if sin do have no dominion over me, why are I falling into sin? And again in Luke 10, 19, Jesus tells his disciples, Indeed, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. But I'm still sinning. <clears throat> I have the power to step on it and trample it and knock it down. But I'm not doing it. If I'm dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, and if I have authority over all the power of the enemy, why do I continue to sin? And I know I'm not talking about myself as alone. Because I know all of us fall into this category. If the devil is defeated, and cast out. Why do I battle with him? Am I not more than a conqueror? Have I not been part of the defeating of him? <clears throat> so why am I battling? Why is there so much of a struggle? According to Dr. Tony Evans, Bible scholar and author, the problem is the back door. Yes, God affords us all the protection from the devil and the power to overcome sin and our sinful nature. And yes, the devil is defeated and cannot touch the believer. But we have left the back door open 
You know what happens when you leave your back door open at home? Especially like at six o'clock in the evening. Mosquito come in. Frog come in. Rat and mouse come in. An old man will come in. So we leave ourselves vulnerable when we leave the back door open. By continuing to be disobedient to God's word, we leave the back door open. In fact, we adhere to the things of God. So we come to church and we pray. And we might participate in a devotion at work. But then we also mix these things with our own likes and desires. So it's not God's business we're dealing with. We're dealing with a mix-up kind of something. Because it's part God and part me. <clears throat> and once I put the me inside there, I'm diluting the power of God. <clears throat> we are disobedient to his callings. And we choose how we will respond in situations. Not how God wants us to respond, but how we will respond. Lord called me to do something and I said, well, you know, we can do it tomorrow. Or maybe I don't really hear so well. And I'm not hearing that God really called me. And is it really God? By so doing, Evans tells us, not only do we leave the back door open, but we give the devil permission, permission to attack us. You know the situation with Job, where God asks Satan, so what about my, my, my servant Job? And he says, oh, he's, if you ever you know, release your, your hold on him, he'll, he'll curse you and he'll... And God gives the devil permission to attack Job. Well, guess what? With our disobedience, we are giving the devil the permission to attack us. Because we lower the defenses. We remove the shield that God has developed around us. We create kinks and chinks in our armor. And we know what they say about the devil. The prowling lion, just waiting, just waiting for you to slip. Waiting for you to leave the back door open. Waiting for you to be disobedient and to give him the permission he is seeking. <clears throat> What Evans also says is that this can lead to spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare in our own lives. Spiritual warfare in our church. 
spiritual warfare in our communities. Because we have let the devil in. Spiritual warfare, he declares, is the battle for the mind and the soul of the believer. When Satan is winning that battle, the believer's thoughts become contrary to God's thoughts and hostile to God. You ever notice? You're drifting, you don't feel like pray, you don't feel like read your Bible. Somebody tell you something and you're, oh, really? And then the doctrine pick you up. And you start to question your faith. I really have to go to church. I really have to go to church. I mean, I really have to forgive the person who did me wrong. I really don't have to go where God is calling me to go. Spiritual warfare. And when you're in that position, the devil is winning. What he also does is create doubts in your mind as to the promises of God. God says, I am more than a conqueror. You believe it? Really? So how come you're not conquering? God says, no weapon formed against me. So why so much weapon I lick you down? Why is there so much divisiveness and separation amongst us? Why does church look so sparse this morning? Where is everybody? Online? Jesus on the line. As wonderful as our streaming is, it cannot replace the fellowship. And so when the sinful nature, when the spiritual warfare begins to beat us our focus is taken off God off Christ and the things of God and so we drift away from God and we begin to doubt we doubt the word of God oh Chuck that right 2,000 years ago it can't be relevant today we doubt the promises of God. We doubt the value of church. And in my case, I doubted the healing power of God. I'll tell you what I mean. Because this is going to be my confession as well as my testimony. My doctor, my cardiologist could not understand why my rate of healing was so slow. Many people who have had what I have had have recovered. She could not understand why the issues I presented would not clear up. And in fact, new issues were being brought to the fore. Yet, while all of this was going on, various prayer groups and prayer warriors who prayed over me, and there were quite a few, all declared that I was healed in the name of God. The 
warfare that was going on inside of me had me doubting and not claiming my victory. I was listening to Satan and not the Lord. Whose report? Well, today I am here to tell you I'm victorious. I am here to tell you the devil is a liar. I am healed by the healing power of God. The back door lock. It lock. But friends, what about you? What has the devil been telling you? What is he saying that you cannot do? You can't get over this and you can't get over that and you can't. The devil is a liar. What is he preventing you from being as God would have you be? Are you doubting yourself? Oh, I can't do that. Really? You have a little tin. About the size of, a, of what you'd buy, maybe peas and carrots in. And it had a label on it. And the label simply said, I can. Not I cannot. I can. And any time I felt, and this is something I used to use in the insurance world, any time I felt that I cannot, I could not achieve a particular goal, me look pan me can, because the can say, I can. At the time I wasn't involved in church and them things there. But that was God speaking to me. Because God was turning me into who he wanted me to be. I can. Not I cannot. I can do all things through. So why you don't believe it? Spiritual warfare. The devil is telling you it's a lie. He is a liar. Why is the devil preventing you from being all that God wants you to be? Check the back door. Check your back door. Whose report will you believe? The only way, I am convinced, to remove the spiritual warfare that is at work in this place. And I've had it confirmed that there is spiritual warfare in this place. Is for each of us to lock the back door. And it doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter how young you are. If the door open, it open. Whose report will you believe? 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So guess what? He's back. And I see my girl have her book. And she have her notes. And this one have her phone. And she have her notes. So something is getting true. So tell me now what I was talking about. Devil is a liar. Sorry? Lock the back door. <laughs> Obedience to God and what? Not get, letting go of the past. The past you had with God. Yes. But letting go of a different past, you know. The past of disobedience. Right. Hold on. Dr. Evans said by leaving the back door open, he, we are giving him the devil the um, permission to attack us because we are lowering the defenses and we are surrendering the shield that God has put up for us. I don't need to say anything else. Come, line up some bless you and send you to Sunday school. Thank you. 
You know what is remarkable about that young lady? So anybody could have recorded any line that I said. But what she captured was not only almost verbatim what was, what was being said, but she captured the essence of the sermon. The essence of this sermon. That's a special little girl. Um, we got to nurture that little one. Eh? Because God has a plan for her life. It's, it's obvious. Yeah. So let us reaffirm our beliefs as we say the words of the Nicene Creed on page 104. <coughs> I, we believe in one God the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, from true God, not made, one in being with the Father. To him all things were made. For us and for salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was dead. On the third day, he rose again. He meant of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again glory to the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. Father and the Son, he's worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our intercession, we will be guided by the prayers of the church to be found on page 212. God our Father, we praise you that you are always ready to forgive the penitent. Bring us by your spirit to true repentance and the joy of knowing your forgiveness. Accept, through Jesus Christ, our Lenten acts of love and sacrifice. Pre prepare us to celebrate his Passover and to share his risen life. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for your church throughout the world. For Howard, our Archbishop, for Leon and Garth, our bishops, the clergy, and the people, free us from dependence on material goods and worship of power, and for all that hinders our union with you. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for our country and all in authority. Purge our land of all that is contrary to your will. Bring us all to know Christ as the way, the, the truth, and the life, that we may live in harmony with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for all who suffer, and especially for victims of greed and violence, make your love known to them and to those who cause suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we commend to your loving care all who will die during this Lent. Bring us all through the passion and death of your Son to share in the glory of his resurrection. The Mother's Union Prayer. Lord, we thank you for your love given to us all. We pray for families around the world. Bless the work of the Mother's Union as we seek to share your love through the encouragement, strengthening, and support of marriage and family life, empowered by your spirit. May we be united in prayer and worship and in love and service. Reach out as your hands across the world. In Jesus' name, amen. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
for act of penitence. We turn to page 216 to 216 for the penitential order. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, <clears throat> let us reflect on his holy word with penitence and obedient hearts. Confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Mercy Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 217. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault, thought, word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We have not forgiven others as we desire to be forgiven. We have not forgiven ourselves as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways or, and our exploitation of other people. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for the uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of, our, of your Son, our Lord, Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last day we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, 
have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. They who thus serve Christ are acceptable to God and approved by others. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
to you these gifts you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. We offer ourselves the lives of the Lord, to be to your Holy Spirit, As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people your life. The Lord be with you. Stop your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord of God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. For you bid your faithful people clear and prepare with joy the Paschal that fervent in prayer. And renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Prayer C on page 137. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation by calling Israel to be your people and in your word spoken through your prophets and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world, in him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, which is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us with your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, let us now pray. This bread to share in the body of Christ.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
page 147, the first prayer. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We upon whom your spirit shines give light to the world. Help us to continue in faithful witness to your word. So we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross and to follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> the people's ward file a bit. Good morning again. I know play play business where play play anymore, you know. The serious business, yes. The spiritual warfare and all of that. We have to work on it. We have to deal with it. You know? We have to close the back door. We have to close the back door. If it's nothing else you remember for this morning, it is to it is to and keep it locked. Yes, sir. Keep it locked. Because, you know, on a cockroach and a mosquito and not like that to crawl, come in your house. Yeah? All right, a couple of things. Um, something we're working on. We haven't quite gotten all the details together. But we are trying this year for Holy Week, Passion Week to have services face-to-face -face every day. So there'll be evening services for the most part, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, will be evening services, and uh, you know, the usual Good Friday and Easter Sunday. The Bishop of, of Kingston has agreed to be our celebrant and preacher on Easter Sunday. So that is, is locked up, but we've been having a difficulty finding priests to fill in on the other days. So we're gonna work it ourselves. Um, I'm putting the lay readers on notice that I'm going to be calling upon you to, to lead even song on certainly the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, Wednesday night would be the last of our Lenten Bible studies. So that particular um, delivery will be done in-house here as, the so as a sort of sermon for Wednesday night. I'm hoping that our, our streamers will be able to be present on that Wednesday night so that we can stream the Bible study in a way that, so that those who are not able to be here physically um, can be part of it as well. So gear yourselves up. I would want to see as many of us face to face on that. To make the week really powerful and worthwhile, we need to have people coming out. So I need you all to be here. Um, you'll get further details as the plans materialize and become a little more, we put a little muscle on the bone. But you'll hear about that. The other thing I wanted to mention is that we need, I, persons have come to me, persons have come to the wardens and so on, and have been asking about com, uh, confirmation, to run another confirmation class. And I'm willing and able, you know, but I need the participants. I know that I had asked the persons on duty 
to speak to individuals and to ask them. And I know one particular gentleman has responded to me personally that he is very willing to get involved with the confirmation. I want us to think about the confirmation not as, you know, receiving the body and blood of Christ. Yes, that was the way, the old way. But what I want you to think about, if you're coming here on a regular basis, and you're part of our worship on a regular basis, what the confirmation does is allows you to become a full-fledged member of the church. This, this particular gathering. So I'm encouraging all of us who are not confirmed, who are here on a regular basis, and we'll just look behind the camera at a couple in the back there, um, and a few others. Um, so please, give your names to the wardens, um, or people's warden, and our absent, <laughs> get up and gone. Um, rector's ward, but give it, or if not, leave the names, call the office, leave the names with the office. We're going to be promoting it at St. Andrew as well, because there are some persons there who want to be confirmed. So let us get involved. The confirmation is about a commitment, yeah, to this community, but it is also a commitment to the Lord, because the confirmation classes allow us to get more deeply, or to have a deeper understanding of, of what we are as Christians, you know? So, uh, it's important for us to, to make that, that step. So those would be the things I would want. I would love to have a confirmation class of 20. Oh yes, on Palm Sunday, our celebrant and preacher will be Reverend Peter Clark. And he's all excited because we tell him that we do a march of witness. So we will gather about half an hour earlier. Again, things will be confirmed to you. In the gas station, for the time being, at the top of the road here by the, the Ruby station at the traffic light. And we'll have our march of witness through the Cumberland community. And we'd like to have a lot of people involved so that we can sing some loudness and wake up people because they're not supposed to be in their bed on Palm Sunday. Anyway, um, and, and let our presence be felt. That is the thing. Our witness of Christ in this place, let it be felt by some nice singing and carrying on and stuff. I'll tell you that we're also, just for your information, planning a similar witness walk of witness in Caymanas. So, Reverend Peter won't be able to go to, to, to Caymanas. So I'm going to go to Caymanas. So you'll see me cut out of here early because we're going to walk through the community. Them say they must start an hour before. So we start, they want a whole hour over there. Yeah? I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, just fan me a little bit and give me some palm and, you know what I mean? And I'll be good. So, that's what we, we're taking back. What it said, the cantle worm, what it name? The worm and the something has taken from us. The devil, in other words. We're taking it back. We're taking it back. Yeah? And we're moving forward. Amen? Amen. Morning, brothers and sisters. Morning. You know, sometimes we have little, little complaints about the notices and its length. But we have to remember also that the notices belongs to us and we have to know what's going on. And unless it, sometimes it's said from here, many persons will not hear because we read, sometimes we read the, the newsletters 
but reading and, and facing conversation is kind of a little different. So welcome to everybody present, visitors, and our online community. Um, Father, welcome back. Is it welcome back or welcome or welcome back? We are happy to have you back, sir. And I'm sure, um, you know, Father said he's healed. And if, if his body is not healed, his faith is healed. And so we are so, so happy to have our priest back with us. And his sermon this morning really speaks to us. You know, Father, my back door open. And my back door is always open. Going to work or going anywhere, my back door is open. But you know, I think it's the back door of our hearts that Father is speaking to. Not our physical doors, but the back doors of our hearts. Okay, um, there is a cross there. And today is Mothering Sunday. And Mother's Union in, in Europe celebrates today as Mother's Day. So if you call your friend in England today and they say, Happy Mother's Day, they are not wrong. And so Sister Foggy, the, the chair of Holy Spirit Mother's Union, will bring us up to speed. Um, I, you know, I, well, this is part of Mother's Union. So when I was not here, we, um, on that Mother's Union, the last Sunday of the last month, a number of things had happened, and I have become some other people for Mother's Union. Welcome again to everyone, and do we have anybody visiting with us for the first time, or the first time in a long time? No? No visitor? No first time in a long time? Isn't it wonderful to know that the morning father is back? He has his whole family. Father's family is here. Welcome, my brothers and sisters. And so we will be, some persons having um, birthdays, and we have no record anniversary. And so on March 10, we have Catherine Wilson celebrating her birthday and Don Neil Gordon. On March 11, Suzette Witter. March 12, Dahlia Legister and Marie Nunes, Michaela Brown. On March 14, Latoya Reed, Mavis Minot, Amanda Roman, and on March 15, Doris Brown. Those people in church, please stand and be duly welcome and celebrate it. Thank you, Sister Carr. Um, we, we will want to return to persons celebrating birthdays to read the, the second lesson um, on their birthday month or otherwise decided. You know, if it's senior citizens and we have anybody in that month, we are asking if, you know, you can give your, your talent in reading on your birthday month. So we look into that. Father is ready to pray. So let, since it's just one person, let him pray and we continue with the notices. One special person. Anybody traveling, returning, or going away for a moment? Where are you? I'm tired to see you go Go to Father's right side. 
But somebody else are going? She had returned home. You know, she had returned back. She is responsible now to the people's ward and she's a part of the congregation. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for these, your sister, your daughters who will travel in this community. Pray, traveling mercies of God, that you take them safely, keep them safely. And when the time comes for them to return, let them achieve, Lord, that which they travel to achieve. And keep them, Lord, in the world. Your mind steadfast for you. So we ask you for the Lord Jesus. Amen. So, relevant. Soon is relevant. All right, thanks. Thank you, Father. On notices continues on Monday. Well, on weekdays, as you will notice in your, in your newsletter, we still have morning prior at 6.30. Monday, we also have in-house Bible study at 9 a.m. <clears throat> Wednesday afternoon, we will have prayer meeting between 4.30 and 6.15 p.m. And that makes way for 7 p.m. Lenten Bible study um, via Zoom. Thursday, as usual, Choir practice, I noticed the choir master. I don't know if she's coming back by Thursday, but she will declare that. Friday, March 15 at 7 p.m., a wife have Taze, and Taze is, a, is an in-house prayer and meditation, and all are welcome, but it is more or less for the younger folks and the young at heart and all of us who knows that prayer is important. Persons, um, our Father has already spoken to Palm Sunday, our March of Witness. However, you know, some persons still want a little excitement, entertainment, but it comes in the form of fundraising. So, persons who will be attending the, the play, um, whatever that name, Pigview Heights, Pig View, Pig View Heights um, on, on Palm Sunday afternoon, please speak to Miss Gordon, Jackie, on the choir, most of us, all of us knows Jackie, so Jackie um, will speak to you on and that. I don't know if I'm seeing here that she's probably trying to arrange transportation. You know, when we travel together as a group, it makes it a little more exciting, and then we don't get lost and lost over each other. So for who would like to go on the, the bus or whoever, just speak to Jackie and she'll make some arrangement. Father also mentioned Easter morning that Bishop Kingston will be our celebrant and preacher. But please remember, we are back to where we, you know, what we are used to. Resurrection morning and Christmas morning, we always have a 6.30 service. You know, we get up fresh, we look for the tomb, and we, we come and worship. The Easter Fair Committee will meet immediately after service this morning. And, you know, Father is back with power of drive and all of that but he is still mourning the loss of a family member. So yes, so condolences to Father Paul and family on the death of his cousin, Duncan Sharp. And that funeral will be at Church of the Holy Spirit on Saturday, the 16th of March, at 10.30 a.m. Um, so you know, some of us can come out and support. We also express our condolences to Sister Stephanie Brown on the death of her cousin, Leighton Weatherburn. 
please keep this family and other families in your prayers. Let us keep them in our prayers. These are the notices and Um, Mrs. Carr also has lost a brother, and Miss Duncan is Miss Miss Duncan has lost a brother as well. These are the notices that I have. Mrs. Bert Edwards is coming to the podium. Right. No, no, so don't tell you. Um, Father, I came to church this morning with a heavy heart because of something I know I must do today. And my heart was heavy because I wasn't sure who was the celebrant and preacher. When I saw you, my heart came down. God be praised. Where is the backbone of this church? Huh? We don't have any? Good. Where is the front door? Down there, sir? Please lock it for me because we're not leaving here until my list is depleted. Okay. There are a few things we need and we need them like today. When I came in this morning, on my list was 60 pounds of chicken. It has reduced to 40 pounds. So we need a show of hands now. We're taking it down as 10 pounds each, which is $5,000. I know you have some pledge forms. I don't know if it is on the pledge form. If it is on there, it's easier for us. Ms. Fogie is writing. Show of hands, 10 pounds of chicken. Let's go quickly. Quick, quick, see one at the back. Can you see that name? Can you see that person? Tisha, five pounds of chicken. That is uh, ten, ten pounds. So we are down to 30 pounds. One more ten. Let's go quickly. Another hand. See two around there, sir. You see those persons? Right, so we are down to 10 pounds, only 10 pounds more. One more hand. One more hand. Where it is? Right over there. So we have finished the 60 pounds of chicken. This one is a little touchy, but I'm going to say it still. 25 pounds of goat meat. Yeah, I know I would get that. Anyway, coming down. 25 pounds of festival mix. Jackie, how much per pound? Don't know how many in the pound. Two pounds in the, in the case? Right, so it's not too bad. Who can give us five pounds? Okay, right. Shelly, five, five pounds? Festival mix. Huh? Yes, the one in the box. So you'll give us the rest? Shelly going to give us 15 pounds? <laughs> and then Miss Wong give us the other 15 from 25, 10 pounds. Good, so we have that. Coming down quickly. Popcorn. Corn for popping. Miss Longshaw, how that sells? By the bag? Um, so we need about three bags or four bags. Five bags? Who talks of five bags? Okay, so she's going to give the five bags. <laughs> Popcorn. That's just Alice. All right. Okay, we need just 100, 150 coal cups and 150 cake plates. Which hand did I see? You can give the cup and plates? Not the corn. Miss, but Miss Longshaw would, would know how to buy it. Yes. Good. So the cup and plate and the corn. Yes. 
All right, see we're coming down. We need some items for the pickup pin. We're not gonna hold you for that. Go into the barrel at home. And all the little items in there that the children would want, take them out and bring them next week Sunday and hand them to myself or Mrs. Shaw Brown. She's round the back there now, but you, oh see a hand down there, you have some? Can't hear you too well. For the chicken, yes, man. You can give the money for the chicken. Uh, oh, to collect it now, please. Thank you very much, dear. All right. So the items for pick up, pick up in. Just look into your barrel. I know that there are some items in there that you don't really need. Please bring them next week Sunday, so that we can fix that pick up in. And the last two items, a bag of cement. Yes, we do not have the $10,000 to hire the tents. We have some tarpaulins, but you know we have the fence and the trees, but when we tie the back, we need the front part to be stable that the wind doesn't take it down. So we need some bowlers, so we, need this. we have the sand and the cement here, the sand and the gravel here, so we just need a bag of cement. Any hand for the bag of cement? We need it this week. Okay, there's a hand there. And we need your two hands here to when we are going to do that. You got the name? For the bag of cement. You don't know your name. Mr. Peterson. Peterson. And the last item is a tent because the market stall is going to be right there on the, the walkway to the small gate. And there really needs the tent. So if we need a tent, and it is 10,000 to rent the tent, so two persons can pay for that. You'll ask about the, the, the tent. Sonia Rose, okay. So your easy father, God bless you, you come out this morning. <laughs> and so my list is down. We have some other little items, but it is coming. And let me tell you something. No weapon against me shall prosper. I share father testimony. 2018, when I was diagnosed, it's under the Lord brought me back. And he brought me back for a purpose. Father asked me right down there, so the Sunday morning, I want you to coordinate the fear. I said, no, father, not me. He said, I said, father, I am 75. I can't manage that. He said, age never matter. I said, father, I'll, I'll pray about him. He said, me pray already, and God give me the answer. <laughs> And here am I, Lord, we only need to pray now so that we can bring all the plans together and we execute the fear on 1st of April. It's my birth month, so you're not going to let me down. God bless you. Meeting? Hmm? Yeah. Okay, all right. I'll be, I'll be. Thank you very much. Holy Spirit, holy for truth. Thank you very much. All right. So we won't be long. As we all are aware that today is Mothering Sunday. Mothering Sunday's religious significance and some of its customs. Mothering Sunday is observed the fourth Sunday in Lent each year. This Sunday is also referred to as Refreshment Sunday, and also the day that revives and energizes the spirit of those who observe Lent and sustain them in the coming weeks on the spiritual journey with our Lord along Calvary Road to the Hill of the Crucifixion. Refreshment Sunday deals with care, sustenance, and nourishment. In many churches, it has been customary for roses to be worn on Mothering Sunday in honor of mothers. Persons whose mothers are still alive would wear red roses, while persons whose mother had died 
would wear white. Many recall that at a point in the service, worshipers, including children, were invited to place the rose which they wore on a cross provided. Special prayers being offered for mothers both living and departed. So persons whose mo mother is alive, whose mother passed, can you come please and stick your roses? I would prefer
we will now have a short prayer in honor of mothers. Alive. A prayer for the love of our mothers. Christ, our Savior, your mercy has a healing touch. You remake us in your tenderness and love. Your compassion brings forgiveness and grace. Your love shows us the beauty of heaven. Thank you, Lord, for showering us with our mother's love. Thank you, Lord, for their concern and care. Thank you, Lord, for all our mothers give us. Thank you, Almighty, for the joys our mothers share with us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, on this Mothering Sunday, a time of refreshment. Time is drawing near to celebrate the Paschal Mystery. Fill us with joy as we move towards Easter. Teach us to follow the example of your Son, Jesus, as we live each day as he did, turning pain to hope and sacrifice to salvation. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, 3 at 7.
The Lord be with you. Go in peace and continue to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.